Well, happy Tuesday, brothers and sisters. Pastor Steve here with you. So glad you've joined me for today's podcast or video devotion. In our Bible reading plan, we are in Romans chapter 7. And to be honest, chapter 7 uh, is a continuation of Paul's thoughts in chapter 6. Um, his argument can seem very complex, complicated. But uh, in simple terms, what he's, what he's saying in chapter 7, and I hope you've already uh, read it, and if you haven't, uh, as soon as this devotion ends, go ahead and read it. What, what he's, part of what he's saying in this chapter is that when a person tries to live righteously by obeying the law, that would have been the case for uh, believers in Paul's day of a Jewish background. They would have tried to follow all the Old Testament rules. For us, it's a legalistic do and list of do's and don'ts. His argument is when you try to live righteously by following rules and law, you are actually more likely to struggle with sin, not overcome sin. Because when we focus on the law, when we focus on rules, when we focus on do's and don'ts, we give more power to them. We give more power to our flesh and to sin. As disciples, as followers of Christ, he says in this chapter, we spiritually died to sin. Jesus died on the cross for sin, and then when we are in spiritual union with Jesus, as we talked about yesterday, being in Christ. So when we are in a spiritual union with Jesus, we have spiritually died to the law, died to sin, and now you can think of it as we are married to Jesus. We are in a relationship with Jesus. And as we focus on him, we find freedom, freedom to live righteously, freedom to love, freedom to do well. That he, that, the, the point is that love works better than legalism, that freedom and love work better than rules and do's and don'ts and legalism. Now, let's, as we wrap this up, look at verses 1 through 6 real quickly. Chapter 7, verses 1 through 6 in Romans, it reads this way. Do you not know, brethren, for I'm speaking to those who know the law. Now he's speaking specifically to Christians of a Jewish background. So today, those of you who are believers, but you come from a legalistic background, you come from a very uh, fundamentalist do's and don'ts type background, if you will, that the law has jurisdiction over a person as long as he lives. Talking about the Old Testament law in particular. For a mar- Notice this. For the married woman is bound by law to her husband while he is living. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law concerning the husband. So then, if while her husband is living, she's joined to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law, so that she is not an adulteress, though she is joined to another man. So he's going to use marriage to illustrate this spiritual truth, that as long as the two spouses are living, you are committed and bound to one another. But if one dies, the other one is then free to be with a new husband, a new wife, because one died. He says in a similar way, that's what happens spiritually when you are in Christ. Verse 4, Therefore, my brethren, you also were made to die to the law through the body of Christ. So Jesus died on the cross for sin. And when you are in Christ, you die to sin and you die to the law so that you might be joined to another. Rather than you being married to the law, he says to these Christians of Jewish background, you are now married to someone else, to Jesus, to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit of God. So you're no longer tied to the law. You're tied to Jesus. The the spiritual principle is stop trying to live righteously by obeying the law. Live righteously by loving Jesus, by resting in your union, your spiritual union with him. For while we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. In other words, The more you focus on the law and the rules, the more you think about the thing you're not to do. 
Whereas the more you just focus on loving Jesus, the less you think about those sinful temptations. But now we have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were bound, having died to the law and to sin, so that we serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. It's like when you first fell in love with your wife, you were so excited, you just thought of ways to love her. You didn't think about all the things you weren't supposed to do. You thought about all the things you wanted to do. And that's how we are to live for Jesus Christ. That's why I keep saying over and over and over, Christians who get hung up on do's and don'ts and rules are shooting themselves in the foot. Loving Jesus is not an excuse for sinning. Loving Jesus is how you free yourself up not to sin, but instead to live righteously. That's the point. Paul is making in Romans chapter 6 and 7. Don't read the Bible because you have to. Read it because you just want to talk to Jesus. You want to hear from Jesus. Go to church and worship not because you want you have to, but because you want to worship and celebrate Jesus. You want to go on a date with Jesus using human analogies. And the more you just focus on loving Him, the easier it is to live righteously. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I hope you can hear what God is saying through His Word. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.